Welcome to part two of my absolute beginners for geometry notes in Blender course. So if you haven't already seen part one, where we look at a very basic concept of what a geometry nodes network is, go ahead and watch that part one. But this is part two, where we're gonna be looking at this little node here called the set position. So it essentially allows us to take an object or something like a curve, whatever, and then we can take it and distort it by using the offsets. We can, for example, plug a noise into it. So we're gonna do a very, very simple little setup here where we take a UV sphere, we give it a set position, and then we feed some information into there to distort our sphere. Very simple little operation, but it's gonna teach you kind of the basic concepts of how to take an object in geometry notes and distort it. And then in the next part, which is gonna be part three, we'll also look at this little selection input here. So we know how to select the parts that we actually want to distort in case we don't want to distort everything. But that'll be in part three, which is the next part. So let's jump into part two now, where we look at the set position. So we're now going to look at the set position. So let's start by selecting our default cube in a new scene. We're going to go to our geometry nodes. In the previous part, we looked at the very basics of geometry nodes, the idea of what a node network is. So if you don't already have a node network here, just click new to create one. And as always, you're gonna see a group input and a group output. So we are going to take this cube. And remember in part one, we talked about how this all works with the um, input object. And we're gonna go shift A over here and search and we're gonna get a sphere. So let's type in sphere, oops, sphere, there we go, UV sphere. Place it on here so the mesh is going to the geometry output. And the reason we're using a sphere because it has a lot more geometry and you can actually see here in the spreadsheet there's a lot more um, geometry that makes up this. Therefore, it's a perfect example here for using the set position node, which is what we're gonna focus on. So let's come over here. And you can see we have a geometry node, which is green. So we're gonna go shift a search and we're gonna get a set position. So type in set position, click on it. And then we're gonna take this and plug it on top of here. So now our UV sphere is going into the geometry and the geometry is going into the geometry of the output. Now we've got this thing here called the offset. We can now take this and plug all sorts of values in here to distort and deform our UV sphere over here, which is gonna be really handy. So let's start with taking a very simple concept. One that some of you may already be familiar with if you've used Blender for some time. So let's click on this offset. So you can click on a uh, node or a little socket here. You can click and holding in your button, you can drag and then let go. And it brings up the search option. And you're gonna type in noise. And then you're gonna get a noise texture. Make sure it's not the white noise, just a normal noise texture. And now all of a sudden you can see this is distorting our UV sphere here. How cool is that? In fact, let's come over here to our UV sphere. Let's come over here and just click on this segment here, click on drag on it. Let's type in value, okay? And let's grab this value here and plug it into the rings. So now both of these are gonna have this number here. So it's gonna be 32 by 32 segments. So let's go and make that 50. So we get more segments. So now we have a really quick way of increasing or decreasing our segments. So now what we can do is we can come over here and you can see the bigger we make the scale here, the finer the noise is gonna be. And the smaller we make it, the um, bigger it's gonna be. So let's go with a value of one. And whenever we plug something like a noise texture into the offset, you're gonna notice that if you go to your top view, it's kind of shifted over to the side a little bit. And in the front view, it's kind of going to the um, our right. And in the left view, it's kind of going back. And the reason that's happening is because of the nature of how Blender works with a noise texture, it's kind of moving everything up on the um, Y axis by 0.5, everything up on the Z by 0.5, and along the X by 0.5 on the negative. So what we can do is, and we'll look at math nodes more later, but essentially we're just gonna go shift A, search, and we're gonna type in vector, and then math, so we're working with vectors here, which are our spatial coordinates. And we're gonna go click on vector math. And then we're gonna place that on here. So now this noise texture is going into the top socket and this vector is going to the offset. And now we can say, let's go ahead and subtract, which means to take away on each one of the X, Y, and Z axes, a value of, so you can click 
holding in and drag down till they're all highlighted and then type in a value of 0.5. So now, whereas before, if I quickly mute this by pressing M, it went up by a value of five, went to the side by a value of five and back by a value of five. We're now grabbing this node over here and we are subtracting it, bringing it back, bringing it back, bringing it back. So that is hopefully making a little bit more sense, but we'll look at math notes later on. But now we have it centered. So this is always an important step to remember when we're working with a noise texture. Okay, so this is looking good, but at the moment it's way too big. Well, let's control the noise. So how do we do that? That's very simple. So let's grab these two nodes and go G to move them over. And we wanna work with vector. So let's grab this node here to subtract and go Shift D to duplicate, move it over and place it on the cable. And then we're going to come here and click and let's change the operation to a scale. So now we have a value over here and we can bring this value down. So it's now taking all of these values here and applying a scale to those vectors. And whatever we increase it, it's going to make it bigger. And if we make it smaller, it's going to make it smaller. How cool is that? So now we have a way of increasing the strength or decreasing it. So um, really, really cool. So let's maybe make it really strong and then come over here maybe make the scale 0.3. And now we kind of have like this kind of blob thing over here. Or even yet, we could come over here to our value node so we can add more to the sphere. So let's make this a value of 100. So we have a lot more faces making up this sphere. And then let's take this to a value of 10. So now we have a lot more of uh, a lot finer detail. And we can come here to the scale and bring it down like so. How cool is that? Really, really cool. So now we kind of have an idea of how we can use the set position to distort mesh in Blender. Um, a really powerful little thing. You're gonna use it a lot. Um, but I think in the next bit, we're gonna look at selection because if you actually go to the set position node here, you're gonna see we have something called selection. And the selections are on a lot of things. So if I go shift A search, for example, and get a extrude, and I'm just showing here as an example, we're not gonna use it now. You're also gonna see a selection. And this selection is essentially gonna allow us to then take a certain part of this UV sphere or whatever object we're working with and say, we only wanna use this part of it. And that's gonna be really important because sometimes you're not going to want to um, add this sort of effect to every part of your mesh. We might only want the top bit to be um, distorted, but not the bottom. So keep watching in the next part, we'll be looking at selections so we can actually have a way of selecting what parts we want to distort or work with. And I really appreciate you guys watching this Geometry Notes beginners course.